Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Madam, we will start. Yes. A very good afternoon, everyone. Respected resource person for this session, Dr. Khyati Vora. Principal Degree College, Dr. Sridhar Shetty. Vice Principal and IQAC Coordinator, Dr. Liji Santosh. Vice Principal and BCom Coordinator, Professor Sandesha Shetty. My dear colleagues and research aspirants. Welcome back to this third session of day two in the 10 day FDP on research methodology and social sciences conducted by the IQAC of Ban Sangha's SM Shetty College of Science, Commerce and Management Studies in association with Indian Council of Social Science Research. In these power packed series of research methodology sessions, a multiple resource persons have covered detailed overview of research, basics of research, review of literature, research design, selection and identification of research problem up to now. We are now looking forward to know about developing and testing of hypothesis from our today's resource person, Dr. Khyati Vora. Dr. Khyati Vora is an assistant professor in KPB Hinduja College of Commerce. She is in academics field since 2007. She has also worked as a coordinator for BCom Financial Markets Program for eight years. She has pursued her PhD in business policy and administration. She is also a recognized PhD guide at the University of Mumbai. She is a member of ad hoc board of study of BFM at University of Mumbai, KJ Samaya College and MCC College. She has also published over 50 research papers in national and international journals, of which many of her papers have been awarded the Best Paper Award. She also has been the resource person for many research methodology workshop. Madam, we welcome you today. Thank you. With this, with this brief introduction, I now request our resource person, Dr. Khyati Vora, to proceed with the technical session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's my privilege to be the part of this session. And um, yeah, I'm, I think on the slide, it is Kathy Shides because um, it's a side effects of marriage. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to take up two sessions today developing hypothesis and testing of hypothesis. But, uh, you know, uh, there are a few things, you know, I always share with my participants before I start. I know you all are already into the uh, workshop now. It has already been maybe three, four sessions already done. And there were uh, great speakers who have come up and talked to you all about the different aspects of research. But still, I feel uh, to start with, uh, there is something that I want to share with all the researchers here. Uh, some are, uh, for, are, uh, are in the first stage of their research. They are thinking of enrolling for PhD. There may be some PhD guides who are there looking for, for the higher knowledge in the research field. Uh, I wanted to share this idea of my idea or my opinion about research is that, see, we all are from a different stages of uh, research knowledge. So uh, if the the, there can be possibility that there is a participant who knows one aspect of the research much more than the resource person. So don't think, uh, in, in fact, I had this notion, oh, I don't know anything about research. And so we all are, you know, we pass through these stages. We all are in a pre-primary and then you go to primary and then secondary and then higher education. Similarly in research. Second important thing that you all participants should keep in mind is you will never learn research in one attempt, you know, in one workshop or in one course, you learn uh, research simultaneously with number of workshops that you attend, uh, when you write papers, when you pursue PhD, when you become guide, you keep on learning, learning. Even the fantastic and the finest uh, resource person or the excellent authority in the research field, they keep learning, you know, uh, and uh, it's a never ending story. There is something new coming up uh, and a lot of new aspects are there in research to understand. Okay, so having said this, um, setting this right mood for this, uh, I congratulate first of all all the participants to take a decision of participating such workshops because only through this workshop, see our academic curriculum doesn't include the basic aspects of research. Here you get to know many parts. 
uh, again sometimes you may feel that uh, you will always feel in workshop some things are overlapping and some things are missing but that's how you learn from research uh, from research workshops so uh, before i go and uh, i really don't know okay what thing since all participants are of different kind to get them to one platform and to prepare a, a teaching material or a, some um, a, a workshop material for the common participants is very difficult for me because i really don't know uh, what is the knowledge level or which stages that you all come to so i have come up something like moderate assuming that you may know something and you may not know something trying to uh, meet the requirement of a different kind of participants because i scroll on the name of the participants are doctor so they already know the basics there will be some people who have just uh, joined into research field and they want to know the real basic ones so uh, i don't know how a earlier resource person must have done but uh, uh, whenever you feel that you want to ask some questions maybe when once i stop in one concept i will open the forum to ask questions and i will pick up one or two questions that time you can uh, put your questions across if you feel that no you have not understood the basic thing uh next uh, directly jumping to developing a hypothesis without getting in touch with rol will be very difficult for me so i thought even if the resource person have taken up the earlier part i still felt that i will connect those part with the hypothesis and how we frame the hypothesis so on that basis the learning outcome of this session will be we will understand the variables will identify the variable variables from rol since this is the workshop i always felt what is the difference between teaching and uh, uh, classrooms or the seminars and workshop is here you have some hands on so i have pick up some few things for you all you all can try if not during the workshop after workshop you can try so how to identify variables from rol then classifying the variables into different categories on the basis of its nature then we'll understand the basic concept of hypothesis what hypothesis is types of hypothesis and at the end how you develop your hypothesis now i acha one more thing see in research nothing is isolated everything right from choosing a topic of an like roi uh, preliminary roi for choosing a topic to the last stage of preparing a report everything is interconnected everything is connecting each other so we cannot say that this part doesn't belong to research ye pehle pad lenge dusra baad mein aisa nahi hoga aapko sab kuch simultaneously sikhna padega har ek cheez saath saath chalegi theek hai so oh, i'll avoid uh, using hindi language in between but i'm so sorry if i do so uh so this is what i have thought about so before i go ahead i just want one of you to just answer this that uh, while uh, rol was been done in the session uh, did the resource person have pick up something like variables i'm waiting for some of you to just answer this question that have the resource person taken up the concept of variables with you all okay so we'll start with that so i got few answers here uh, okay now why review of literature why review of literature earlier you know what i understood of review of when i did my dissertation i thought pura report banane ke baad last mein hai na pages badhane ke liye rol dalna chahiye correct but i am sure after attending the last session of rol you will have got an idea even before choosing a topic you should do enough rol enough review of literature has to be done this is a sole part in fact apni body ke liye blood kitna important hai start se end tak sab kuch connect karta hai waise hi research ko jo sab kuch sabse zyada connect karta hai wo hai review of literature and most of us fail to do that properly correct so we'll go ahead so what is the review of literature when i conduct any research when you i want to travel from one place to another there are road already constructed so there is review of literature my findings of the research paper or the dissertation will be addition to the rol for others and that will be the objective of the study uh, okay now what research is all about it's like a web 
everything is connected in a research any area that you pick up for your phd also has to be interconnected any next paper that you are writing should be connected to your earlier paper what happens in our uh, uh, especially in our region i have seen that even including me we have scattered if there is conference coming on marketing i'll write something on marketing if conference is coming up on uh, hr i'll start writing on hr something no it should not be the case once you do your phd in some or you specialize into one research area you keep on writing a research paper connected to it and there how you create a web and a series of your research findings which you can compile later on and publish it so this is how it goes okay this i'll skip roi is done at various stages you all know how to build concepts current studies gap analysis sample size for any damn thing you need roi now you will feel that why is ma'am talking a lot of about ROI? We are already done with it. That is something that is coming up, and you will then realize that why I was talking a lot about review of literature, and I was setting a right mood for this workshop. What do we search in research? I want you all to quickly answer this in the chat box. What do we search? Give me answer in two or three words. What do you search in research? जैसे हम मूवी देखने जाते हैं तो उसमें लीड मेन रोल होते हैं ना तो हमें पता है कि हम के जी एफ अभी आ रहा है तो उसका एक लीड रोल है पुष्पा में पुष्पा एक लीड रोल पे था तो हम जब रिसर्च करते हैं मैंने मेरी पीएचडी किया मेरा रिसर्च पेपर किया तो कुछ एक चीज होती है व्हाट इज दैट नोन एज आंसर टू सम क्वेश्चन इट इज अ रिसर्च गैप इट्स अ नॉवेल्टी अ नोन आइडिया थॉट फैक्ट ओके रिसर्च गैप ये वॉट डेल्स okay gap most of you are answering is the gap who fills this gap what are we talking about so here is the answer variable the entire research is all about variable this is what we miss most of us i will always refer as us is because i have gone through this thing many of my research paper i have written i have even got an award but i never knew what was it so something that varies if something is constant do we do research is there any requirement of a research when there is something very constant there is not no need of research we do research is something is variating something is variable there is some movement there is some pattern and we want to know how much is this moving why is it moving when does it moves what will happen in the environment that that thing will variate so main lead of the movie is the main is a variable in our research in our research who is a main lead our main variable so whenever you pick up any research topic be very choosy about your main lead because if your variable goes wrong if you don't predict properly your entire research goes wrong and at the end of my uh, session tomorrow i will also share some secrets even i am trying to unfold i will not say that i am already done with it but uh, yeah i have taken one or two steps towards and my papers were published that why aren't our research paper been published easily in a renowned journal i will share this secret with you all but as of now let us come back variable so we all have to keep one thing in mind after this one and a half hour all my participants are going to uh, get a complete knowledge about how to frame hypothesis for sure so you will have to be with me together so variables you got the idea but ma'am variables hote kya hai anything that variates so marks score satisfaction price trends decision perception behavior they keeps on changing now if somebody ask me my behavior is a variable but my gender is constant my age keeps growing that's okay but even that is constant in particular period of time income group is categories do it keeps changing in a particular moment in a certain circumstance they are categories they are not variables so if i am studying somebody's age is not a variable it's a category that you are studying so you should know the basic difference between the both if you have to understand in your layman language main lead can be actor or actress yes so main lead are the variables but when you have a categories two genders age groups are four income groups are five education groups so education may be variable but the categories that we draw under education is the categories the responses like undergraduate postgraduate they are not variables so i hope you all are very clear about what are variables and what is uh, categories 
So anything that vary with time, situation, or any factor is known as variable. Now, to say so, there are many variables. But what I'm concentrating as of now is uh, looking at the social sciences research and most of the paper that we do, we concentrate on the four types of variables. One is independent, dependent, uh, mediating, and moderating variable. Okay, why I'm talking about variable is because through review of literature, I'm going to connect two, three. See, first I spoke about ROL. Now I'm talking about variable. Next, I will connect both and I will show you how to derive at the hypothesis. The variable which is stable, which is unaffected, which is not influenced by other, rather they are the influencer. They influence others are the independent variable. And to remember that, I just gave an idea that parents and children, our parents are independent. We are dependent on them, right? So this is how you will prepare yourself that it is independent variable, which we influences others. They don't get influenced. The other cause and the results are the effects, the cause and effect relationship. Dependent variable, like children are dependent on their parents. So they, these are the, they get influenced. They are not influencer. They get influenced by the independent variable. So this is how you remember independent and dependent variable. To be more precise, what we have learned from our undergraduation is price influences the demand. When you lower the price, the demand will go up. And when you increase the price, demand will come down. So it is very, very simple for you to understand the independent and dependable through price and demand relationship. So when price decreases, the demand of the product increases twice a So when the price is independent, you change it immediately, there is a change in demand, cause and effect relationship. Can you predict demand? On the basis of price, yes. Why? Because price is independent. And with the change in the price, there is a change in demand. We are not talking otherwise. Maybe in the later, in the longer uh, prospect, we can talk about it. But here, you can restrict yourself only to this phenomenon. Only to this phenomenon. So I hope you're, all of you are very clear with it. Independent variable kya hota or dependent variable kya hota See, in hypothesis, if you don't know the nature of variable, you can never frame hypothesis. So I want you all to be very participative quickly. The more you will answer fast, we can cover many more things in uh, this entire session. So teaching method influences marks of students. So can you all tell me which are dependent and which are independent? I will pick up five to six answers. We'll see and then I'll go ahead. So teaching method is what? And student is what? Teaching method is independent variable. Okay, this is what I'm getting the answers. Teaching method is independent. And marks of students are depending on the teaching method. So, yes, most of you have given the right answer. The teaching methods are independent variable. Marks of the students are dependent variable. Next. To study the effect of increase in employment on the standard of living of the people in developing nation. If you have seen research paper, you will always read something. So I have given common examples. You have taken very common examples. Can you tell me the answer for this? Increase in employment is which kind of variable? And standard of living is which kind of variable? If you want to study the effect of increase in employment, increase in employment is independent and standard of living is dependent variable. Very good, very good. So again, this thing is clear with everyone. Angela, very much with me. I can see that. Now you have to tell me otherwise. Employee satisfaction is influenced by employee em engagement policies in the company. Tell me the answer. Yeah, Shobha, I will come to this. When I'm teaching you media and moderating, I'll get to this point. So what is independent variable here among the employee satisfaction or employment, employee engagement policies? Yeah, satisfaction is a dependent and independent variable is the employee engagement policy. And we want to know if we change some employment policies, will there be any effect on the employee satisfaction? That is what we are studying, okay? 
fear. Now I'm coming to the next thing, very important is uh, mediating and moderating variable. Now, most of the students get confused. More of the researcher gets confused. And the next confusion is that we have to learn so much. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? I will uh, unreal this secret at the end of the session. Mediator. Now, there are variables which may not have a direct relationship, but they are the cause relationship between two variables. Correct. So, uh, mediator variables or the mediating variables are the, that causes mediation or they are the middleman between the two variables. If they are vanished, the relationship doesn't ex exist. If they are there, there is a relationship. How to understand this with the example? Let us see this. Is a middle value between the uh, IDV and DV. IDV is independent variable, DV is a dependent variable. Now, let us understand to some, okay, I have this habit of putting some pictures and remembering some few things easily. Because, you know, when uh, in workshop, you know, I used to, when I used to be participant or I'm participant in some of the workshops as of now, uh, I remember things when resource person explains me. But then I, after when I started writing my papers, it skips from my mind. So it is very easy to remember this. Always remember mediator as an pandit who uh, get married to couples. Your couple ko shadi karwate hai. Vaise hi you have to remember any variable which is establishing a relationship between two another variables, IDV and DV, then that, that variable is named as a mediator or mediating variable. Now, there is somebody who have asked me a, a question of a second stage, whether mediator or moderator becomes independent or dependent. Yes, they do. But let us not get to that stage as of now, which I will explain you in the later charts. I've, I think you know, I've taken up all those questions that I usually face in my workshop and try to cover overall in the PPT. So let us understand this. You all can read something below. Okay, independent variable, mediator variable, independent variable. For example, salary is positively influencing education and then education is positively influencing health screening expenses. Now, there is a question in this research paper that if income increases, does the expenditure on the health screening increases? So there was a positive relationship. But it is because the income increases or the salary increases, there is increase in educational level in the, in the society at large. And because of that educational value that people have, the expenditure on the health screen increases. Now, if we remove education, people with a lot of income, but zero education will not spend or will not understand the importance of health screening. Do you all agree to this? Again, I'm repeating. Say for example, Mr. X is earning a very good amount of money. His income is very good. But has no knowledge, no education of nothing educated in society. Now, this person is not aware about the importance of spending on the health screening on a regular basis. Will there will be expenditure on health screening? No. But if that person get an education about the importance of health screening, then there is a positively a good relation between income salary or the income of an individual on the expenditure of the health screening. Yeah, there is somebody who is asking me some questions that can you tell me the difference between mediating and moderating? 100%, ma'am. We are just trying to uh, read to Mandal. Let us first understand the concept of mediation. Then we'll understand, so understand the meaning of moderation. And then we can differentiate. I hope you um, are there and you're listening to me. Next. I, I request all the participants you know, to just stay with me for some time. Once I'm done with one concept, then you can put up more questions. Otherwise, what will happen? I will skip your questions, which I don't want to. Correct? So does anxiety affect? Now we are talking on the examples. You know, We are working on the examples. Does anxiety affect test performance? And if so, does it depend on test taking experience? So I want to know the relationship between these three variables, anxiety, test performance, and test taking experience. How I'm going to understand these variables. So can anyone tell me 
about the structure of variables here, which is independent, which is dependent, and which is um, mediating effect. So first, I want to know only answer for independent variable. Among these three, which is independent variable? Which is IDV? IDV excellent is an anxiety. Which is DV? Which is dependent variable? Perfect. And which is the left or is mediator? Perfect. Independent variable anxiety, dependent uh, variable is test performance and the text taking experience. Now, you all professors, most of you must be academician and you can relate to this. Usually this happens that, uh, you know, there is a lot of anxiety and uh, it, it all uh, comes in your, your paper when you write, you know, when the students write their paper, if they are, uh, there is a lot of anxiety, the performance is very less, but it all depends on the test taking experience when they were at home. When they were in their own room, Aram said they're apply, uh, appearing for their examination online. There is no uh, senior, uh, senior supervisor or junior supervisor, and there is no worry about assessment, and the entire experience is soothing. Now tell me what will happen. So the relationship between anxiety and test per performance is because there is something like test taking experience. Correct? Okay. At this point, I hope you have got it. If college takes staff techniques, this leads to cohesiveness among the group, which leads to the active participation of the employees. How can we connect all these three? Staff picnic is independent variable, which leads to active participation. The whole idea is that if we have employees ko ek, uh, uh, happy holiday, ek jasa gumane lekar jayenge, then there will be a good uh, participation. But provided there is a cohesiveness, what if I'm taking my entire staff for a picnic and they are having their, their own group and there is no cohesiveness, they are enjoying their part and coming will be no active participation. Active participation will be there only if there was a cohesiveness during the period of staff picnic. Do you all agree to this model? So until here, are you all clear with independent, dependent, and is the concept of mediating completely clear in your mind? Mediating variable established relationship between the both. Yaha ke example hai, let us take up. Ke if we remove cohesiveness, if you can see here, if you remove cohesiveness, will there any relationship between staff picnic? Will, will the staff picnic have any influence of active participation? No, it won't influence them at all. They will behave there as they are. But if there was cohesiveness among the staff during the picnic period, then there would that would lead to active participation. And I assume that, you know, without looking at the faces of the participant, it is very difficult to judge. But looking at the answers in the chat box, I think that you all are clear with the concept of mediators. Now let us talk about moderators. What is moderating variable? Now this variable does not establish any relationship. Rather, they give an idea about the strength of the relationship between independent and dependent variable. IDV or DV, what is the strength of the relationship that is described by the moderator variable? They are moderating. They are influencing the relationship. They are not influencing the variables. So that affects the strength of the relations between predictor and criterion variable. It can be qualitative, it can be quantitative. Moderating variables are typically an interaction term in sense of statistical models. So that we will discuss in the next uh, uh, slide. But usually, usually, except some very particular cases, moderators are categories. Moderators are categories, whereas mediating effect is becomes independent variable. Correct. Now let us understand this. Is a third party variable that modifies the relationship with that modifies that doesn't establish. Okay. Now the 
uh, how will you graphically present this i hope you remember how we we graphically present uh, the mediation effect and if you have to hypothetically prepare some model then in that model if you show this arrow which is pointing towards the another arrow that becomes moderating variable so these are the simple sign symbol that one should know that how we write our statistical model in hypothesis so independent variable has an influence on dependent variable but moderating variable is something that is affecting the strength of their relationship now as we all know i have mostly taken up by example of teaching uh, because you all can relate it very easily now take an example there are several teaching methods now let us ignore student learning skills just tell me yes and no that by teaching you can improve the performance of the student yes kitna influence hota hai that i'm not asking you but a simple question if you teach somebody there is a results there are there is a performance of student but the question is how far it is affecting if the student is a good learner we all know there are in the, in the class of 10 maybe two or three students are excellent learners so some are very average and some takes lot of time to under they are small learners or maybe their interest is not that their learning skills are not so good so do you think the relationship between teaching methods and student performance is highly influenced by the learning skill of the students yes or no so if somebody is a very good learner this uh this calculation will go very well this statistics goal shows very good relationship but if the students learning skills is not so good then it won't show up in their performance i think my screen is there with the arrow marks here correct so now my another question is to you there was somebody who was asking me ma'am dono mein difference kya hai mediating and moderating अगर मीडिएटिंग इफेक्ट होता तो स्टूडेंट लर्निंग स्किल निकाल दो तो टीचिंग मैथड विल नॉट इन्फ्लुएंस स्टूडेंट्स परफॉर्मेंस बट वी एज अ टीचर नो कंसेप्चुअली विच इज रॉन्ग करेक्ट इट मे हैव अ वेरी माइनर इफेक्ट बट इट विल हैव एन इफेक्ट ऑन स्टूडेंट्स परफॉर्मेंस विद द टीचिंग मैथडोलॉजी बट स्टूडेंट लर्निंग स्किल अगर निकाल देंगे रिलेशनशिप होगा वीक रिलेशनशिप होगा बट इन अ मीडिएटिंग इफेक्ट there is a something another variable if you remove that mediation then there is no relationship between teaching method and students performance but here it is nothing like that a uh, student learning skill is a moderating variable because it influences the strength of the relationship between independent and dependent okay let us look at this example one more trainers knowledge influences the uh, weight training improves employees efficiency let us take my example i am using one training method there is n number of methods and which is uh, going to affect your uh, efficiency in research but do you think that my knowledge see if there is somebody who is training you all speakers will be there and they don't have an equal uh, teaching quality teaching parameters they have their own style some are really very good there are some some something goes in for some participants some participants are different so there are various factors when you judge any outcome again i'm repeating as a researcher when you judge any outcome always remember there are several factors influencing it there cannot be a single factor so we only study a single factor for our research paper when we do phd we take up multiple variables to understand the model as a large correct so here if i remove trainers knowledge i'm talking about trainers knowledge in a sense of degree of knowledge that person has thoda to knowledge hoga tabhi to wo teaching kar raha hai training kar raha hai lekin agar zyada knowledge hota उसको ह्यूमन साइंस पता होता कैसे पढ़ाते पता होता टॉप सब्जेक्ट अच्छा होता एंड मेनी अदर थिंग्स देन दैट कैन इन्फ्लुएंस और हैव अ स्ट्रॉन्ग इन्फ्लुएंस ओवर द एम्प्लॉयज एफिशिएंसी आई एम स्किपिंग दिस पार्ट ऑफ आर ओ एल एक्चुअली now i want you all to practice this the management process alignment positively influences the performance of higher education through service quality and organization commitment tell me what is idv or what is dv and what is an another variable is it moderating or is mediating
I'm not getting the answers. Ha, yeah, yeah. Yes. Is to analyze the relationship between different variables. So variables to me samaj me aage hai that management process alignment is one variable. Performance of the higher education is another variable. Service quality and organization commitment is third variable. So let us establish a relationship. Looking at a sentence, how can you frame? Okay, management process is independent variable. Got it? Then it influences positively the performance of higher education through service quality and organization commitment. So what is this service quality and organization commitment? Which kind of variable is this? Is it independent, dependent, mediating, or moderating? Okay, I've got three answers right. Four, five, six. Yeah, two of you all are going wrong. Most of you have given me the right answer. I have used a word through, which means that management process alignment is independent variable which is influencing the performance of higher education but it is only through the service quality and organizational commitment if i remove service quality and organizational commitment then there is no relationship between process alignment and education performance agar quality nahi rakha organizational commitment hi nahi hai then there is no relationship between the both I hope most of yes, most of you have given me the right answer, and I'm very happy about it. That there is a sig and how to write this? There is a significant mediating effect of service quality and organizational commitment on the relationship between what management, process alignment, and organization commitment. I'm very happy for the participant. Most of you have given me the uh, right answer. It's a acha. Sometimes there is a question. Give me. As a whole, that the same. Table becomes mediating and moderating. Yes, but how to know that conceptual understanding? See, hence I have taken up education paper here is because all of us can relate this. If I would have taken marketing, then HR wale, account wale would not understand or relate it. So you should have an, a good understanding of your paper or concepts, very clear. Then you can go ahead and establish such relationship. <laughs> This is how the graph will be prepared if you are talking about mediating effect. Okay, so before I go here, there is something that I've prepared for you all. Uh, I think this will help you all a lot in uh, understanding how to work on ROL. I don't know what your resource person have done, but this is how I have done and I am very comfortable deriving uh, to the variables. Now, some of you will be confused saying that ma'am, these variables get where they are from. Where they are from. This is how we know how to get into ROL. Which paper will tell us about our study? What is our study variable? Yes. Is this the query in most of you uh, eyes that we have to understand that how we identify variables from ROL. From where we will get these variables. Yes. So for this, you know, I have given some of these examples. There are 10 papers that I have uh, downloaded and I have done some ROL for this workshop especially. So I have done for three and I want you all to do it for one, at least one paper year so that we understand that, yes, you all have got that idea about variable and how to write the findings for that variable. <laughs> now, this is a practice for you all how to prepare hypothesis. Okay, I'm getting to that point. Okay, so usually this is a tip, uh, this is a uh, kind of advice to all my uh, friends there. Always prepare an ROL chart, maybe in the Word format or in Excel. Prepare it, anything that you refer, anything, you should immediately put it here. This becomes a handy ROL for you all to write your thesis at the end of your uh, PhD. So in the first column, you can mention paper details, then you can write objective of the study. Then you write findings and then you write, uh, okay, in between you also write research methodology adapted by that researcher finding and then hypothesis. Now, from where to do this ROL, that session has already been done. So I'm not talking about that. But from ROL, how will you derive your hypothesis? That is what I'm doing. From that paper, say for an example, this is one paper that I have reviewed. What I will do is, I will cut copy paste. I will just cop copy paste the objective of the study. Also the methodology, which I have not done as of now and the findings, three things. 
objective of the study, methodology and finding as it is from that paper. Okay, there are uh, there will be again a one problem for you all that you cannot have an access to all the papers that is available on the internet. Embryal, uh, elsewhere, JSTOR, they don't allow you this. You have to pay a subscription fees. But in most of the renowned uh, journal, what they give is the uh, abstract of the paper where they are mentioning the purpose of the study and the finding. So that is sufficient for you all to do the ROL at the preliminary stage to identify your variables. So uh, what I have done is, I hope my screen is visible to all of you. Can you read the objective of the study here? Just a second. Can't yeah. Okay. Ha. Huh. So I want you all uh, to read this objective and you will see how I have just cut copy paste. I have not reframed it at all. So this chapter examines whether students perception of learning Attitude and performance are affected by the use of multimedia technology. Both traditional and multimedia technologies uh, methodologies were used in financial accounting paper too, offered to one of the leading universities in Lebanon using data collected so and so. Achha, usse methodology ke mein bataya hai. So, we have to say that this objective is that person is trying to understand students' perception of learning, attitude, and performance. This is a connection. Hai. So, let us come to the finding of that person. Can you all see the findings now? I am helping you to derive at your um, variables and then how to frame hypothesis. Just a second, why this is happening? Ha. The results indicated that stu students perceived the use of multimedia, especially PowerPoint lectures, as being more entertaining and organized than the traditional media. So this was their outcome. However, the later methodology demonstrated more efficiency in terms of explaining theories, enhancing problem solving abilities, allowing for the greater interaction. So then that person have explained how this person have taken up the methodology. Two methodology, however, did not demonstrate a significant statistical difference in terms of students' learning and comprehension. Despite the positive student perception for PPT lecture, results suggest that systematic approach of traditional methodology exceeds the PPT in emphasizing course material and enhancing problem-solving abilities. So now you will feel like So my sweet way of doing is first. Any research paper that you are reviewing, first have an habit to write down the variables. So looking at the objective and the findings, I have noted down the variables. So in this, what are the variables? It is a student's perception for the teaching methodologies. Then they are talking about learning attitudes. Then they're talking about performance. Then they are also talking about use of multimedia technology is a teaching method and traditional method. So that multimedia technology is a modern method. And the fifth is the traditional method. So you have got all the variables here in front of you. Can you have an idea about which are the independent variable, which are the dependent variable, and which are the mediating variables? You can easily identify which variable is affecting what. You can note down which variable is independent, which is dependent. So looking at the findings, now this is how you work on ROL. ROL se mein milta kya hai? Ye. Yahaan se humare hypothesis bante hai. Unki finding. Someone else finding is my hypothesis. It is not hypothesis for them. They have said A is equal to B. They did a research. They said yes. A is equal to B. Now when they write something in finding is a research outcome. For that particular researcher. For me to start with, I will say that A is equal to B is not hypothesis for me. In some text. So now let's understand. Uh, looking at the findings, I have drawn some the hypothesis that this person is writing. There is no significant difference between traditional and modern methodology on students' learning and comprehension. See, ye mujhe ye sentence kahan se mila? What I have written, there is no significant difference between traditional koi bhi methodology le lo. Student learning uh, capability or comprehension so difference nahi hai. If you come to this sentence, yaha pe likha hai. Two members, however, did not demonstrate a significant statistical difference in terms of student learning and comprehension. You got your one hypothesis from here. 
Now, if you want to check whether this is applicable in your study, in your area, in your subject or not, correct? Another thing. There is a positive relationship between students' perception and PPT lectures. Now, they say that if the teacher is going to use PPT lectures, it is very entertaining for the students. Students' perception changes. So, you have to establish one relationship there. There is a significant moderating effect. They said, however, the students were enjoying PPT lectures more, but when teachers adopt traditional method, their conceptual clarity, problem solving course is more clear. So traditional methods are not out, they are in. So that is what the researcher has tried to understand. So there is a significant moderating effect to systematic approach. So my question will be, is traditional approach is giving a more conceptual clarity, enhancing problem solving abilities, if I draw this chart, but yes, it can have an influence, but if it has a systematic approach of traditional methodology, then a systematic approach becomes a moderating. The PPT methodology negatively influences students' performance in their final grade. Achha, usne ye bhi kuch likha hai. Relationship hai. Co-relationship always checks whether the relationship is direct or inverse, positive or negative. So here they have mentioned the last findings. As measured by the final grade, PPT methodology affected student performance negatively, especially for lower average business students. So here, look at this. You have to just, so now let me uh, come down to what I am trying to do here is, you review the papers. From where to review, you have already got the session. How to review, that is also been discussed. How to derive hypothesis, that is what I'm connecting. You take an Excel sheet, you download those papers from those papers, just uh, remove all these objectives, findings, put it in your Excel, Aram say take a printout, keep the variables and hypothesis while a column blank and read it, underline that which are the variables are this research paper talking about, what kind of relationship are they talking about, write those variables in that variables mention whether it is IDV, DV, moderating or mediating and then establish the uh, hypothesis on the basis of their findings and that hypothesis for you will give a huge chart of, now when you start doing this for 25-30 papers, one uh, good thing that you will notice is most of the research paper will talk about the same kind of relationship. Initially, you will find that everything is different, ma'am. Everything is so different. Some people are talking about some other variables. But when you do a lot of many reviews, at the end, you will come to know that most of the research is done on those variables and those relationships. The world is too small. It is assuming, it is it has been looked upon as a big because you are looking, looking at the very small things. When you gather more information, you will, in fact, in, in fact, you know, I, I'm sure your resource person must have told you this. When you do a lot of ROL, a systematic ROL, you will get to know there are only a group of people out of, out of the billion and dollar people in this world that there are a group of people writing on the same paper. There are less number of people. You will find out, but in a very late stage. So immediately. Like somebody writing on higher education and specific writing on Mathers and students' performance. If you go on doing a lot of ROL and mention the list of the authors, after certain next you will see the names are repeating. And then you will find out, okay, these are the group of people who are writing on this topic. So this is how we have to look upon. Okay, so next quickly I will go and then again we'll go to hypothesis framing. The purpose of this paper is to evaluate the effectiveness of the change in teaching structure in improving the performance of the students in an introductory management accounting subject at Australian institution, the change in structure involved a shift in the balance sheet between balance between lecture and tutorial, face-to-face -face contact hours with increased emphasis being placed on tutorial in an attempt to enhance the benefits of the cooperative learning. This was the objective. We'll look at the findings. So looking at the objective, we got to know that there are variables about teaching structure that person is talking about traditional teaching structure, new and traditional, and students' examination result is outcome. The result uh, revealed that the new teaching structure, that is tutorial workshop, improves students' performance significantly as compared with the traditional approach. So now we have to know that how is teaching structure has an influence on students examination reason but it depends on whether the teaching structure is new or traditional so let us check this there is a significant relationship between new teaching structure on students performance is that what 
the person is saying that yes there is a significant relation and there is it, the relation is more stronger than the traditional matter and the last one that i am doing it for you all next one i want you all to do it this is the third one that i am going to do it for you all fourth one i i want i will be keeping those uh, uh, file open and i want you all to tell me what should be the hypothesis okay the purpose of this paper is to analyze students per performance and perception when a flipped classroom setting is used in comparison with the traditional model again people are talking a lot about new and the uh, traditional way of teaching especially here is about flipped classroom can anyone quickly tell me which is an independent variable here independent variable in this objective quickly ye dekh ke samajh aana chahiye ki ha isme independent variable ye hai looking at the objective yes puja right answer yes a uh, a uh, jyoti your answer is not right do hi answer aaye what about others the purpose of the paper was to analyze students per, uh, per, uh, performance and perception when a flipped class, classroom setting is used shri lakshmi your answer is right yes 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 so now you got the idea देखा ये ऑब्जेक्टिव देखे हम तुरंत वेरिएबल पता चला कि वेरिएबल है इंडिपेंडेंट फ्लिप्ड क्लासरूम हाउ आर दे इन्फ्लुएंसिंग व्हाट स्टूडेंट्स परफॉर्मेंस एंड परसेप्शन इज द डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल सो लेट अस चेक द रिजल्ट व्हाट आर दे टॉकिंग अबाउट द रिजल्ट रिवील दैट बेटर लर्निंग आउटकम्स वर अचीव्ड बाय स्टूडेंट्स मतलब द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स वर गुड व्हेन द फ्लिप्ड क्लासरूम मेथोडोलॉजी वाज प्रपोज्ड इट हैज आल्सो बीन फाउंड दैट द स्टूडेंट्स परसेप्शन of teaching approach were more positive when the flipped model was followed i hope now you are getting the idea see perception what bhi aaya performance bhi aaya and the flipped classroom methodology also seems to foster students participation and motivation more effectively than traditional teaching methods so flipped classroom is also they are improving students performance but how they are improving students performance how is so flipped classroom is improving student performance good independent dependent but there are two variable that they are talking students participation and motivation if we remove this will there be a relationship between the flipped classroom and the performance flipped classroom methodology maine adapt ki maan lo kya uska performance kaisa hoga agar students participate hi nahi karte hai motivated nahi hai can it show up the result no so now let us look at the now first job is to identify variable flip classroom students per, perception performance and there is another one here uh students participation ho gaya motivation yeah and participation fifth is students participation i want you all to quickly tell me uh, independent ho gaya dependent is students performance what is motivation and participation which kind of variable is this students motivation and participation is which kind of variable excellent are ritu kaise moderator bol rahe ho aap agar main motivation nikal do students participate nahi kar rahe motivate nahi kar rahe to how will flip classroom show up the results yeah most of you are giving the right answer so i assume that the concept clarity is coming up it's correct so now let us move to the hypothesis framing looking at this findings this rol humne apne hypothesis kaise banaye there is a significant relationship between students perception for teaching methods and their performance this is one thing that we can say there is a significant moderating effect of the mis flipped acha ye maine टीचिंग मैथड्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स परसेप्शन के बीच में एक है फ्लिप्ड क्लासरूम वो एक कैटेगरी है सो यू कैन इग्नोर दिस इज डिफरेंट लेवल ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट फ्लिप्ड क्लासरूम पॉजिटिवली इन्फ्लू स्टूडेंट्स पार्टिसिपेशन एंड मोटिवेशन ये भी एक हो गया एक्टिव लर्निंग अप्रोच इज अ मीडिएटर इफेक्ट बिटवीन फ्लिप्ड क्लासरूम एंड स्टूडेंट्स पार्टिसिपेटिंग एंड वन दैट आई सेट जस्ट नाउ इज देर इज सिग्निफिकेंट मीडिएटिंग effect of students 
participation and motivation on the relationship between flipped classroom or the methodology used you can say we are very specific using here flipped classroom on students performance is so many relationship we can establish only looking at the results we can establish many relationship only looking at the results the problem with us matlab those who are not aware is we do rol but what to refer and especially when we read a paper no with a um, new papers are very scary especially the language and you feel are ye to kaisa hai meri connection mein nahi aa raha hai samajh bhi nahi aa raha hai usme methodology itni bhari bhari ano hua menko hua significance r ye wo regression scm nahi samajh mein aa raha don't get to the third stage directly go step by step review the paper only look at objective only look at findings derive the variables on the basis of the findings and variables they have established some relationship for them is a finding for you is a hypothesis so now the last thing in this uh, part is i want you all to quickly prepare some variables out of this so the objectives are here the objective of the study is to investigate the differential effectiveness of teaching methods on students academic performance the differential effectiveness of the three teaching methods unhone teen teaching methods li thi teenon teaching methods ka differential effect dekhna hai outcome ye raha the mean score of the result demonstrates that the teachers student in the interactive method was most effective teaching method followed by the student centered method while teacher centered approach was the least acha ye hai na differences par hai will work on relationship you can skip this part you can come down to this look at this effect of learning methods on performance of the students in english language performance in english language in a secondary school establish relationship between learning methods and students performance asa can you tell me the variables here perfect so ye baby steps do it is a very small baby steps but these are very 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 important i'll tell you the very biggest secret of research is which is i have one for i am still unfolding is if you know the basics you can master see most of us like i know about me and i know some of them who are participating we are all from commerce field we are not aware about statistics rather we need not know much about it we should know the basic of statistics to be a smart researcher most of us feel mujhe regression nahi aata isliye main acha researcher nahi ban sakta it's not that regression pouch kar sakta statistician ke paas lekin conceptual understanding reading paper thinking like a researcher researcher is completely unbiased i have seen some of the proposal as of now unhone khud ne pehle se bata diya ki research kya hoga to aisa nahi hona chahiye can motivating be moderating because high motivating leads to good performance yes motivation becomes moderation also yes it becomes mediation so and moderation abhi ye kaise pata chalega uske conceptual understanding how will someone know it is exactly acha in moderation also in mediation also there is a complete mediation and partial how you will know through conceptual clarity you should know the concepts you should read the research papers you should read the research reports and understand that what people are talking about concepts kya hai if you know the concept only then you can go to statistics okay now i'm coming to thought i thought of giving this uh, excel sheet to your organizer to give it to you all so that from this you can prepare some variables write some hypothesis and get back to me tomorrow so before starting the session five minutes we can quickly see if you could write those hypothesis here so if you all wish i can share it we'll come back to our uh, ppt now yes ma'am we can do that surely
Okay, I'll, I'll share this uh, Excel sheet with you all. Yes. Uh, I was I was at this. Okay. We did this. Variables are done. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm talking about some complex models. Uh, why I'm going to talk about this again? I have to tell you at the end. Let us understand the quality in higher education. The purpose of this paper is to develop a new model, namely, you know, most of the teachers get scared of model. Why can't you make a model? Why See, I'll give you some idea about model. If a girl and a girl is married, what do you identify? The girl and the girl family to ask the mother, father, father, relation लड़की वाले लड़के के लिए पूछते हैं यही है जब मुझे स्टूडेंट्स का परफॉर्मेंस पढ़ना है आई वांट टू नो व्हाट इज द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स हाउ विल स्टूडेंट्स परफॉर्मेंस इंप्रूव देन आई शुड नो व्हाट आर द फैक्टर्स इन्फ्लुएंसिंग स्टूडेंट्स परफॉर्मेंस टीचिंग मेथड्स लर्निंग स्किल्स एनवायरमेंट फ्रेंड सर्कल और सम डेमोग्राफिक प्रोफाइल इज मेकिंग सम डिफरेंस सो इफ यू आर गोइंग टू स्टडी वन वेरिएबल यू आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द फैमिली ऑफ दैट वेरिएबल बिकॉज़ दिस वेरिएबल इज नॉट आइसोलेटिंग वेरिएबल देयर इज नथिंग लाइक आइसोलेशन इन दिस वर्ल्ड सी आई विल शो यू समथिंग मोर uh there must be some questions ki mam kaise pata chalega fir bhi variables ke bare mein nahi pata hai maan lo ki you are studying something very different like a uh, uh, cloud based uh, yeah home based cloud kitchen ke bare mein kuch tha it is about food items it is about delivery system pick up some review papers now if i you can see this research paper i don't know uh, ye screen visible hai um i hope it is visible to you all see the paper factors influencing academic performance of the students at university level literature review these papers are fantastic most of us try get scared reading this paper but you should not what you will have to do is look at their findings they they will give you right answers this person have done a good job and made it, made it very easy for us now what he has done or she has done is gathered all the reviews on this paper and try to understand what every researcher is trying to say so for this financial condition is one of the factor influencing academic performance living locations parents education time management skill so these are the family of academic performance all these factors are influencing and some of the factors some of the author, more authors have supported this that yes see one two three four five authors are saying that yes financial condition uh, has an influence on the uh, academic performance of the students so look at this so this is how you will get the these are many variables pick up two variables write a research paper pick up four five variables and prepare some model which is moderating which is independent which is dependent for an independent variable again there will be some independent पेरेंट्स भी पेरेंट्स होते हैं ना दादाजी है ना पेरेंट्स हमारे लिए पेरेंट्स है लेकिन पेरेंट्स तो खुद बच्चे किसी और के तो इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल अपने आप में इंडिपेंडेंट नहीं होगा वो भी तो किसी पर डिपेंडेंट होगा उसको फाइंड आउट करो उसकी मॉडरेटिंग इफेक्ट फाइंड आउट करो दिस इज ऑल ये हमारे रिसर्च गैप होते हैं सी दिस मेनी थिंग्स दैट पर्सन हैव एक्सप्लेनड एंड देन यू कैन गो टू सो मेनी थिंग्स सम कैटेगरीज एंड कंक्लूजन देयर इज अ डिफाइंड एफ Fact of number of independent variable. कितने सारे fourteen independent factors and five dependent factors were cited in the paper under consideration. So imagine, see, it is all about garbage, garbage in, garbage out. आप किस quality का research paper review करते हो? उसमें से क्या लेते हो? वही तुम्हारे PhD में या तुम्हारे research में आएगा. If you are going to look at a very uh, non, not so good quality, I will not say bad. No research are bad, but not so good quality of a research, then you will not get good quality of variables and relationship. Correct. So let us come back to our PPT again. Uh, okay. Uh, can you all prepare something out of this on a paper that findings dekhte hai. Mediated model argued that placement is the better interaction of the quality of education in India. If I have to check the quality of any educational institution, placement. Final outcome of our placement is to be done. इनकम होना चाहिए ना कि भाई हमारे जो बच्चे यहाँ से जाते हैं फाइनली क्या वो अपना ब्रेड एंड बटर अर्न करते हैं दैट इज द फाइनल थिंग सो मॉडल बट ये डायरेक्ट तो नहीं होता सो मॉडल रिव्यूज द क्वालिटी ऑफ एजुकेशन इज बेस्ड ऑन दी 
best faculty excellent physical resources wide range of disciplines you give number of disciplines and knowledge to the students which paved the diverse students body and to improve the employability of the graduates coming out of the higher education institution the above model proves that the placement is a now we want to prove it how is a mediator if a factor saying that services will lead to a performance of the institution ye dekho सर्विस क्वालिटी मॉडल कैसे बनेगा सर्विस इन एजुकेशन बेस्ट फैकल्टी फिजिकल रिसोर्सिस वाइड रेंज ऑफ डिसिप्लिन मेक्स अ गुड सर्विस क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट एज एन इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल लीड्स टू दी फाइनल आउटकम ऑफ दी हायर एजुकेशन बट इट इज थ्रू प्लेसमेंट अगर कोई इंस्टीट्यूशन बोलता है आई एम एन एक्सिलेंट इंस्टीट्यूशन बट वी डोंट हैव प्लेसमेंट सो सॉरी अब स्टूडेंट्स आर नॉट प्लेस इन द सोसाइटी देन कैन यू से यू आउटकम इज वेरी गुड प्लेसमेंट निकाल दो रिलेशनशिप निकल जाएगा i hope uh, i am able to explain you all that um, how we frame the hypothesis some of them are more here but i guess i'm running out of time i have to explain you something about very important hypothesis if time permits then we can come back here meantime what you all can do is you all can prepare something on the paper and see if that model is exactly what i have prepared in the ppt ha na to thoda main skip karti hu ye part we come to hypothesis we spoke a lot about variables we spoke a lot about what is independent dependent mediating moderating how we look at those variables how we understand variables from rol now let us understand now you keep all what i have learned on a side and concentrate here what is hypothesis i know most of you have some idea about hypothesis that it is a tentative statement which which is derived from now you all know it is from rol ROL की फाइंडिंग्स हमें हमारा हाइपोथेसिस देती है ठीक है गैप एनालिसिस थ्रू आर आर ओल आइडेंटिफाई द नीड फॉर द स्टडी आइडेंटिफाई द एंड सिलेक्ट द वेरिएबल्स ऑफ द स्टडी कैटेगराइज आईडीवी और डीवी आइडेंटिफाई मीडिएटिंग मॉडरेटिंग वेरिएबल एंड स्टडी रिलेशनशिप और डिफरेंसेस दिस इज वॉट वी हाउ वी फ्रॉम अ हाइपोथेसिस कैसे करेंगे ROL findings, identify variables, establish a relationship from their findings. Pick up number of papers, twenty-five, thirty papers. You should show, have at least to show up. Or, man, look, किसी एक ने बोला A is A relates to B. लेकिन ये किसी और ने बोला ही नहीं. Can you take up for your study? थोड़ा risky है ना. लेकिन पंद्रह लोग बोल रहे हैं yes, A is equal to B. हाँ भाई. then you will take a ps in your paper that there is supporting people they have done see when you review one research paper that paper have reviewed many paper and they have reviewed many paper so it's not only one paper that you are reviewing you are getting a lot of information from that paper so let us come here a complete understanding of hypothesis those who are already aware you all can just uh, substantiate or uh, others please pay attention to this i am explaining you the entire uh, uh, concept of hypothesis here what is a relationship acha hamare movie ke main lead hai ladka ladki hero heroine ye hamare variables hai theek hai variables mein hamare variable ko naam diya hai boy and girl what is the relationship between this boy and girl mera question ye hai what is the relationship to uske pehle ek question nahi aana chahiye kai relationship hai kya Is there any relationship between this boy and girl? क्या relationship है वो बाद में आता है. The next the first question that everybody is the are they related? Are these two variables related? So, we'll get an answer. They are stranger. You will collect data from where you will collect ROL, primary data. You will ask people, and from that facts you will get to know whether they are strangers or they have some relationship. so you got an answer no they are not relate, uh, related to each other they don't know each other they are strangers you are accepting the null hypothesis you know what many a times in a very uh, advanced level of the researcher they ask uh, always that ki agar agar null ho na to tumhari study weak hai If null is rejected tumhari study achhi hai have you heard about this concept any one of you That advanced level of researchers they always use this language. If a null 
accept the is very poor, but null is rejected, it is very good. Now you will know the secret why it is said so. If there is no relation, कहां से आया तुम्हारे दिमाग में ये कौन से पेपर ने तुमको ऐसा बोला कोई पेपर ऐसा बोलेगा इन दोनों के बीच में रिलेशनशिप नहीं है तो तुम उसको स्टडी क्यों कर रहे हो पंद्रह लोग बोल रहे पचास लोग बोल रहे दिस बॉय एंड गर्ल आर हैव अ रिलेट रिलेशन तुम्हारी स्टडी कर रहे हो तुम्हारी स्टडी ये बोल रही नहीं इनके रिलेशन नहीं है तो भी रिलेशन नहीं है ये दोनों स्ट्रेंजर है नल इज एक्सेप्टेड इट्स अ नल नल मतलब नथिंग नो रिलेशनशिप नल मीन्स नो रिलेशनशिप इट इज एक्सेप्टेड वॉट विल हैपन आगे क्या मूवी बनाओगे आप कुछ मूवी बनेगी आगे कुछ स्कोप है जब तुम बोल देते हो कि ए का बी से कोई कनेक्शन नहीं ए कितना भी ऊपर नीचे हो जाए बढ़ाए कम करे बी का कोई असर नहीं है लड़के को लड़की के साथ कुछ कनेक्शन ही नहीं क्या स्टोरी बनाओगे आप उन दोनों के बीच में कोई मूवी नहीं बनेगी रिसर्च ही नहीं होगा Hence, once you do a quality ROL, you do a quality data collection, you take care of all the parameters, the chances of your hypothesis, null hypothesis, except is minimum. In very very exceptional case situation, this may happen. I hope the concept null hypothesis means nothing like negative hypothesis. Null means nil. Nothing is existing. If I tell you. this box doesn't contains any ball so is it bad no it doesn't contains it's still it's not nothing is existing and when it is accepted your story ends here but what if it is rejected what what does rejection says null hypothesis that they do not have a relation is rejected it means they have relationship when you say it is rejected story starts what is rejected that they do not have a relation is rejected do not have has rejected so they are stranger is rejected it means they have some kind of relationship and here the story of alternate hypothesis starts under hyper and alternate what we say okay they are not strangers they have relationship but the next question abhi hum bahut kuch kar sakte hain acha relationship hai क्या है ये लड़का लड़की के बीच में क्या ये भाई बहन है फ्रेंड्स है लवर है क्लासमेट्स है कलीग्स है एक सोसाइटी में रहते हैं फॉलोवर और लीडर है मेंटर मेंटी क्या है ये डॉक्टर और पेशेंट है कुछ तो होंगे जब रिलेशनशिप है कुछ तो होगा एंड एंड जब रिलेशनशिप है ये पता चला देन आई विल चेक वेदर दे आर पॉजिटिव और नेगेटिव आइदर दे आर डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट और इनवर्स रिलेशनशिप जैसे प्राइस एंड डिमांड हुआ करेक्ट सो दिस इज व्हाट हाइपोथेसिस इज सो देयर आर नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस एंड क्वेरीज के नल हाइपोथेसिस समझ में नहीं आया अल्टरनेट समझ में नहीं आया मैं आपको एक क्वेश्चन रख ये स्टोरी तो समझ में आई सबको दैट व्हाट इज नल हाइपोथेसिस एनी एनी रिलेशनशिप फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यहां से आर ओ एल से हमें वेरिएबल्स मिले वेरिएबल के बारे में हमें क्वेश्चन है कि इनके बीच में क्या रिलेशन है उसके क्या पड़ेगा रिलेशनशिप है यस इफ देर इज रिलेशनशिप इफ देन वी कैन गो हेड बट इफ द नल हाइपोथेसिस इज सेइंग दैट देर इज नो रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन दोस टू वेरिएबल एंड दैट इज एक्सेप्टेड दैट सेंटेंस इज एक्सेप्टेड द स्टोरी एंड्स हियर करेक्ट but if there is a relationship then uh, then again uh, yeah i am so sorry i have to stick to my language okay i'll just repeat something more when i uh, thought about writing a research paper or studying my research i should first extract my now i'm connecting everything see rol from that rol i got variable from this variable i want to know whether some relation of relationship but before what kind of relationship the question arises is there any relationship and if there is a relationship then the story go has hence hence in most of the hypothesis in phd or in research paper we start with null hypothesis there is usually a question that why should we start with null should i write null or should i write alternate there is always this confusion there are two reasons that i have identified that why should our paper have null hypothesis the first reason is already explained here before saying that they have a relationship let me check whether they are related if they are not related then my story ends and then i will talk whether they are brother sister or father and daughter whatever 
another reason is okay i ask you some question and very scientific reason that you test your corona hmm? the result is positive when they say the result is positive what was the assumption before the test what is the assumption before the test when say they they say corona positive so what is the assumption before they have started testing nidhi your answer is very right see i'll give you this difference between a pure science and social science white board where is the option of white board um in share screen madam yeah i'm sure i i was looking for a white whiteboard board. yes madam if you will do share screen yeah i'm doing that share screen in that in okay. that there is an option in on top there, the middle one this is the whiteboard. iphone iphone or ipad ka option aa raha hai um chal any well write it here annotation bhi nahi dikh raha hai mujhe i am not able to see that okay no problem if i am not able to see you we'll find a quick solution because we don't we are running short of time i said if the report says corona positive assumption of the pathology test pure science test जैसे मलेरिया पॉजिटिव ऐसा आता है ना टेस्ट इज मिस्टर ए इज इन्फेक्टेड कोरोना वायरस द टेक्नोलॉजी दे यूज टू टेस्ट ऑलवेज एव एन एजम्शन दैट यस दिस पर्सन सैंपल कंटेन्स द इन्फेक्शन और दोज वेरियंट और दोज वायरस एंड वेन Actually, shop, they say it is a positive result. Correct. I hope the concept of pure science is clear. In our research, if I say there is significant relationship uh, between A and B, our statistics, our statistic test, thoda ulta kam karti hai. they always check the results they always check with null the always the assumption here is the assumption of any statistical test only few of them guys baki to most of them they always assume there is no relationship the results that come up man lo maine a and b ka statistics lagaya aur result is p value Zero point zero three or two. So when they say zero point zero three, what what are they talking about? They are talking about null hypothesis reports. अगर मुझे इसी चीज को analysis करना है, analysis करना है, and if I have to assume, then I will say my null hypothesis rejected. I will talk a lot about significant value tomorrow, but here I am just discussing this, and my alternate will be accepted. If I do not write null, then my results will accept the will reject my alternate hypothesis. So in short, if you are not able to understand this as of now, you can keep it because I am going to discuss in detail tomorrow. But it is always preferable to write null because of two reason. Here I have already given you the reason. it is always safe to say no first i don't know what is it and let us check you know it is always safe for side and second is because our all our uh, statistic test checks and give results for the null they don't give for the alternate 
work the concept of non alternate hypothesis is now very much clear with all of you okay another thing in research when we write objectives so i have seen many people writing this even i have written huh? don't worry understanding the concept understanding the advantage the influence these are not research these are the conceptual understanding of that paper in pure research of social science you do some relationship studies or differences you check either relationship or differences and third is impact and impact is a very critical term that one can use during their uh, when they write their objectives okay how much time is left i have only 10 minutes i'll complete it soon okay so now let us come to types of hypothesis analysis hypothesis ke classification acha there is one more type of uh, classification of hypothesis i spoke about null i spoke about alternate there is a classification of working hypothesis वो जो बताते ना कॉम्प्लेक्स स्टेटिस्टिकल वो सब क्लासिफिकेशन वाई वर्किंग हाइपोथेसिस सी कोविड और द लॉकडाउन पीरियड वॉज अ पीरियड विच मे नॉट हैव मोर सपोर्टिंग आर ऑयल बिकॉज अ कॉन्सेप्ट वॉज वेरी न्यू सो वेन समथिंग इज वेरी न्यू एंड यू रियली डोंट नो द रिलेशनशिप वेदर एक्ट दे एक्जिस्ट और नॉट एंड सम टेंटेटिव अंडरस्टैंडिंग देन इन एक्सप्लोरेटरी स्टडी use write down working hypothesis because then you don't have rol to refer more rol to refer and to support what you are saying and hence in such kind of research we use in exploratory studies we use directional or you can say a working hypothesis okay under types or in the classification depending on the variables we say univariate bivariate and multivariate you have already done this so you are much aware under uh, marks of girls and boys you want to know by who scores more who is very good at studies so most of us feel that it is a big study girls and boys two variables no they are not two variable they are categories marks is a variable i hope you now can relate problem of the study was to compare the marks of girls and boys now tell me which is the variable marks is girl and boy a variable no they are category they are constants so this is a univariate type of a study where there is only one variable and when you are going to study only one variable can you establish a relationship can there be a significant relationship between marks of girl and marks of boys i hope you are getting this idea that you cannot compare you can compare the outcome saying the differences in the marks of the boys and girls you cannot say there is a relationship between boys and girls marks so now i hope you got when the variable is one you cannot establish a relationship you can find the differences if you remember teaching methodology wala ek maine jo skip kiya tha usme anova tha what does what were they saying that there are three teaching methods which is more influencing on the students performance so student performance was one variable matters what the category in that context because that person was just checking the difference between those matters as far as the performance is concerned so in this case how do you frame your objective to study the difference in marks of students on the basis of their gender some of the examples of univariate study when there is only one variable if there are more than one variable how do you study this understanding whether teaching method influences performance of students teaching method one variable score of the students or the performance of the students is another variable there is a significant relationship between teaching methods and the performance of the students so this is how you write the hypothesis acha why you write significant i will remind you tomorrow morning once we tell you the is a i give you very short information about why we use the word significant okay okay and then there is a objective how you derive acha there is an another question ma'am when should we write our objective see purpose of the study and objective make minor difference is is that when you thought of writing some research paper or some phd you do preliminary review of literature but before that there is some idea that i want to understand whether this affects this or not then you do rol then you take a variables through variables you prepare hypothesis and once your hypothesis are clear that which gap you are studying and which variable relationship you are looking to test you write your objective so usually it should be the technically it should be 
hypothesis, ROL, gap, variables, hypothesis, and then comes objectives. To analyze the relationship between employee satisfaction and working hours, bivariate analysis. Developing a relationship between teaching methods, learning style of the student, and classroom environment with student satisfaction. Now you can see they are talking about more than two variables. And when you are taking more than two variables, you are talking about multivariate analysis. Now you will wonder why, ma'am, we want to know whether univariate data when you want to test your hypothesis, when it has to be accepted or rejected, you have to choose a test. While choosing a test, there is a question whether you are doing a univariate analysis, whether you have a bivariate or you have multivariate. Univariate hai, ek hi banda rehne wala hai, to one room kitchen chalegi. Do log rehne wala hai, one bedroom hall kitchen chalega. Lekin char family lehne wali hai, bhai bada flat lagega. Vesa hi, when your analysis, when your hypothesis is multivariate, then you need to take a very complex test. So which test to pick up to check your hypothesis? One of the answer is that you should know which kind of analysis is this. Is bivariate, multivariate, or univariate? Usually your objective should contain four to five objectives. See, you, there are people who may write it can be seven to eight objectives, but you should curtail and make a nice framework of your study. That framework comes from your ROL. So this is what I had today to discuss with you all. In fact, there is something more that I can discuss if time allows. It's a 3.30, right? Yes, madam. But in between, if you all have any queries regarding what I explained. So let me summarize. I discussed with all the importance of ROL. I help you all how to understand variables from ROL, understanding variable, establishing relationship, independent, dependent, mediating, and moderating, how to identify variables, and from that, how to write your hypothesis, and how to frame your own hypothesis. Which hypothesis you should write, null or alternate, always go with null, is because it's safe to start with. There is no relationship or no differences, and if it is accepted, then the dead end. If it is rejected, then the story continues. So, please, any questions here? I will request all participants to put their questions in the chat box, if any. Somebody asked, ma'am, can you tell me what is working hypothesis again? See, working hypothesis is, thing is very sure about it. There is no more ROL. The student's performance, teaching methods on student performance, many of the ROLs are there. They have done a lot of study, but there will be some concepts which are unexplored. They're exploratory in nature. Then uh, you cannot have a proper hypothesis. Then you would say it is a working hypothesis. And you write a, you even don't know that exactly what are the variables. For null, at least you know these are the variables. But for that, you are really not aware what will be IDV, what will be DV, how should I relate? What will be related? So you write a sentence or some paragraph yeah, for work hypothesis. Okay, then. I... Yeah, there is another question, ma'am, if you would like to take. Yeah, there, what is the difference between directional and non-directional hypothesis? See, uh, when we are talking about uh, one independent and one dependent variable, we're talking about direction. We know that this variable is influencing other. But in some study, which are again exploratory in nature, both the variables are independent and you, you are not very really sure which is influencing whom. Because it is unexplored. Too much well, no much data uh, affecting. Then we take up a non direct hypothesis. You mention anything about it. So uh, I hope you all are uh, uh, happy with the uh, kind of PPD that I've shown you all. And uh, at least with this session, you all know. Uh, that yes, variables are something very important and through variables is what I'm going to create my hypothesis. And, and, and friends, I'll tell you something. Hypothesis tumara sahi gaya, questionnaire sahi gaya, because all these 
is very important when you test your hypothesis with the test that you are using people are more conscious regression cmls and anova and r you aajkal kuch chal before they get your concepts clear and don't don't uh, please ignore the importance of rol don't get scared of rol take up rol write down just i have shown you very easy way don't you need to read all see you will start reading paper once you get an interest hum kisi ki gossiping kab karte jab hum ko bare mein pata hota hai correct so look at this in this manner Ma'am, I think I'm done. There is a lot of gratitude and uh, you know ah. participation from the uh, attendees. So I think it was a very, very interactive and you know a very engaging session. Thanks, ma'am. If you all have any other questions, you all may please put in the chat box. And if somebody called us, Doctor Narendra has asked a question on uh, about UGC journals and all. There is an exclusive session uh, only based for that. On last day, last session is only for how to publish your papers. So you don't worry about that. Ha, <laughs> Books yes, and publications, yes. yeah. You all so have a fantastic can. pool of resources. Yes. and i should appreciate your management uh, as uh, sm shitty college and the principal sir who is very dynamic in nature that he has picked up the beautiful resource person i am not but my i'm a two years i'm to and to binary and uh, the morning just shared you know all my participants here today morning i just spoke to my mentor and i said sir i felt that i am in a primary school and i'm again i'm going to talk about something very foundation but he said that the entire foundation of higher education is on the primary education if you don't know the basics so everybody start with this basic which is very important even i am learning as of now i want to learn the technicalities of scm model but i could do it only when i know the basics tomorrow session i am going to discuss about see hypothesis testing no ye mujhe bahut fasa diya ma'am ne itna bada naam dekar testing of hypothesis ki what technology what the statistical hoga main kal sab koi statistics nahi aaungi but i will tell you how to choose the test what are the assumption what are the data and something very important about questionnaire so that will help you see again i'm repeating um, what is the neha's query neha ne kuch query pucha hai can we again put it ma'am please please suggest some books on thesis writing uh, ma'am the best answer is shodh ganga pe jao log kya beautiful thesis likhte hai थीजिस देखो और कभी भी अपने पीएचडी टॉपिक जिन्होंने चूज नहीं किए हैं आई हैव सम वीडियोस आई शेयर विद मैम जी मैम मैं आपके साथ आज शेयर करूंगी ये पीपीटी भी थोड़ी बहुत चीजें हैं डू रीड लॉर्ड ऑफ थीजिस दे डोंट डू Pulsar four objectives. No, it's yeah. not that. I'm just giving idea. People write ten, twelve, fifteen objectives. If it is not required, people write objectives like twenty-five, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred, 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 it depends on the quality sometimes not always the quantity correct and also let them watch uh, yesterday's and today's morning sessions uh, videos which we have already put it in their telegram group because that has got all the queries because all those resource person who were picking the same thing so along with ma'am has given a lot of inputs related to the same and yeah she is always a rocking star for us are <laughs> ma'am bas <laughs> Yes, Zainab, we will continue that. Okay. So okay, should I? Once again, once again. Okay. Then, so yes. Uh, so, ma'am, on this note, uh, I would like to call upon Assistant Professor Komal Tiwari to please propose a formal vote of thanks. Please unmute. Madam, you are muted. Thank you, Zainab, ma'am. i was unable to unmute thank you zana ma'am for that good afternoon one and all present here today i would first thank our resource person dr khyati vora for sharing her knowledge and to enlighten all of us today madam you have covered all the topic right from the understanding the variables types of variables until the developing of the hypothesis 
and as a fresher, I could understand the topic very well, and I could also uh, uh, answer a few questions of yours. So uh, I was able to understand, and the way you taught, uh, the way you explained it, ma'am, it was a wonderful way. I mean, uh, otherwise, what I feel is research to some extent uh, is like you know dry. Uh, concept but the way you explained the way you correlated with the marriage and everything it was all interesting all the time throughout thank you so much ma'am for that i'm grateful towards our management and principal of the college for giving us the opportunity to learn and grow i would express my gratitude towards vice principals dr richi santosh and professor sandesh shetty for their constant support and motivation I would thank all my teacher colleagues. And last but not the least, I would like to thank all the participants for their patience listening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Kathy. Ma'am, see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Take care. I request everyone to please quickly fill the attendance link. Now, once again, for